What's going on guys? This is the annual yearly wrap up video 2019. I think we've done a few of these before. Maybe two other ones? Maybe. Definitely one. We yeah. definitely did last year. So just recapping the year, looking forward to next year. What's happened and what's gonna happen. Yeah. We got some topics we're gonna go through, mostly diet related, some non-diet. Theo is gonna be involved, baby stuff. Theo, I guess, was the big thing that happened for us. Yeah. First off, guys, we're in this new sweet studio we built. Like two weeks ago. So... And we didn't build it. Well, I built a lot of it. I mean, I didn't do this. That's what was built, though. We hired someone for that, but I did the bookshelf. We bought it together. I did the lighting, which I think is pretty cool. Let me know. We got a little blue tint. We got an orange tint. And then we got lighting and, like, dim lights above yeah. us, too. Mainly critique the lighting. Everything else is kind of just here to stay, no matter what you guys say about it. Including us. But the year in review, I guess the big thing is probably our baby. Yeah. We had one. So the end of last year, we started off like yeah. December 2018. 18. Found out we were pregnant. So, I mean, that was the entire year. Mm -hmm. Just baby on baby. And delivery is way harder than women say it is, than I've read. Yeah. It's the most in painful but incredible thing I could have ever achieved and have done thus far. Um, Good job. Thank you. Most of what I've been thinking is like how much attention we're giving to the first one, Theo. Yeah. And then I'm thinking like the second one's not going to get any of this. It's the first grandson in both of our families. Which is big because boys like, are boys, right? Yeah. Learning to like be productive with a baby is also really tough. That's what I've been kind of trying to do. Yeah. Getting routines. Routines. You can't really do routines though. And then falling into the role. So like doing the housework, doing the baby stuff you know, doing most of the poopy diapers. Like it, it became so natural, you know, for me to just do that. And I get it now, like I get it like, oh, I'm naturally a housewife and Matt is naturally the breadwinner. Not to sound sexist. Mega got me this sweet Atlanta influences everything shirt. It's actually really funny. It's a Christmas present. Cause we saw this in the mall. And I was like, Atlanta influences everything. That's just like a wannabe Detroit versus everybody. She's trying hard. Yeah. And then as a joke, a week before Christmas, he's like, get me an Atlanta influence everything shirt. But this is actually a pretty cool one, Spudweb. But it's just so funny. Atlanta influences everything. Clearly getting influenced by Detroit versus everybody. Detroit influences everything. That's what the shirt should say. But Detroit doesn't influence It everything. does, though. Motor City. And then another big thing is this membership site we're launching. So we've been We're going to get to that. Oh. For you. That's future. That's the oh, end of the video. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we're going to go through some categories of things, like tops. Tops for the year. And Okay, yeah. Top new snack. And by new, do you mean like it came out this year or just like new snack on Whatever, my radar? Whatever, however you interpreted it. Okay, you go first. You go first. Okay, mine is Epic Bars. Oh, the Rise and Grind ones? They're called Rise and Grind ones. They're a little different. I think they made them taste better. They added like a little bit of fruit. So there's like a chicken one that has apple in it, three carbs. If you had like one of the venison Epic Bars, you could literally choke to death very easily. Yeah. And, I mean, they must have like 30, 40 deaths under their belt. Um, yeah, those are good. I eat one like every day still. Well, yeah. they're new ones. So, so maybe the that's new why ones they you don't, there's no choking hazard. Yeah, yeah, they reformulated. And then mine is going to be, um, Matt put me onto this coconut mana. Mm. So it has replaced peanut butter for me. It is phenomenal. If you guys have not eaten like coconut butter, coconut mana, interchangeable. It's not as good as peanut butter though. I know it's better for me. And it's also easier to, Eat in like portion. Moderation. Yeah, in sure. moderation. Um, that comes with the territory of not tasting as good usually. No, but it's it tastes so good. It's, not it's as like good naturally pepper. sweet. It's like a dessert, but I blend it into my bulletproof coffee in the morning. I eat it by the spoon. You remember when I first did that and you thought I was a psychopath? He was doing it for like a month, I feel like, and I was like, ew, how gross. I feel like in a vlog I even called yeah, you out. Yeah, you did. Oh, and then one other thing. I don't know. Do you guys know how old we are? I'm 31. And this is going to come out and I'll still be 29. But you're 30, basically. January 5th. Top diet change this year. So I was pregnant eight months out of the year. So that's a lot of different diet changes going on. But I'm going to say the past two months, I've been focusing more on nutritious foods, quality over quantity. And guys, if you know me, if you've seen our vlogs, like I am not a quanti quality over quantity person. Like Matt, he, he got me onto raw. He does kefir. He's, you're very much like... Nutrient density matters. You were like eating liver more than I was. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, how many snacks can I get away with? Like, I just want to hit my macros. That's the most important, blah, blah, blah. But I've realized that if I really want to get control of my hunger, which I do, I'm really on like a mission to do that now. I need to focus on nutritious foods. So the past month, I've been just going like haywire with the fat, like animal fat, especially like lots of duck fat, lots of tallow, less like coconut oil and stuff because that's not as filling. I'm just like, 
eating till I'm full and a lot of it's coming from like good quality fats. Yeah, we made pemmican mm -hmm. recently and we've so been making good. fat bombs with animal fats like duck fat. Duck fat and, and dark chocolate, so good. So for me, I got two little ones. It's been over this entire time doing this channel, I feel like gradual transition from more plants to more animals in my diet. So like if you watch our first year, probably it was like big salads almost every day. Mm -hmm. Haven't had a salad in like, like a year, at least over a year probably and just more animal foods, increasing the quality a little bit. And I haven't been tracking at all because I used to be the salad mindset to me is trying to get a lot of volume, still thinking a lot about calories, limiting calories, eating more animal foods. And it doesn't have to be, you can do this with plant foods too. But if you're yeah. eating like whole foods, animal foods, to me, I can just eat intuitively. It's not really possible for me to eat intuitively when I have an abundance of plant foods. Even if it's whole foods, I still, for some reason, I'm like more hungry, more <laughs> thinking about food. And then that's something that will be a part of the membership site is more like ancestral type recipes like pemmican, kefir, I got a few ideas of what I'm gonna do on there. Some more stuff like that. We're moving on to top thing we learned. Ooh, okay. Was well, I went back through our podcast. Keto for Normies is our podcast. You can get it on iTunes, Stitcher, anywhere. And I looked through who we had spoken to because I learned the most from speaking to people on our mm -hmm. podcast. So we talked to Dr. Michael Ruscio, podcast number 86. That's a good one. Yeah, and it was really, really eye-opening. We we had a really great conversation about fiber, and a lot of you guys ask us about that. Matt always gives his like opinion. Uh, people are like blown away. They're like, "No fiber? Why do you want no fiber in your snacks?" And a lot of people have this opinion. It's not just like mine. No, but when you say it, yeah, new people coming to the keto diet or new people looking to make a change, they're confused. Like, why don't we want fiber? It's such a, it's so highly regarded. Like, if you have issues look to fiber, but Dr. Michael Ruscio actually talks about if you have sensitivities, if you have gut issues, more fiber, more carbs, that's gonna cause more problems. Maybe that'll be our million uh, subscriber rap song. Mo fiber, more problems. You can't even say it with a straight face. We could get like those baggy suits and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, or like poop pants. Poop pants? Yeah, you know, we eat all the fiber and we just poop ourselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, the biggest things I learned was also based on Theo, just like watching him and it made me realize, like, because I've always viewed my parents and just parents in general as adults, right? Yeah. And I realized adults don't really exist. Like, I consider myself kind of a kid still. And I just randomly had a baby, you know, at a certain point. And it made me think, like... My parents probably weren't really ready to just sacrifice no. their entire life to raise a child. And they did. And they did it. Mm -hmm. That was just kind of a revelation I've had. It's like learning and appreciation. Favorite podcast interview? Mine was 114. Changing your relationship with food with Jessica Turton. And I was just really surprised at her presentation on just every, like the way she delivered, first of all, her accent's fantastic. She's from Australia. We finally talked about something that I've really been fascinated with. It was less on like, oh, what foods you should be consuming and like, what's good for your gut health. It was, it was a lot of like mental. It was a lot of like your mindset around food and how to make that a positive experience. And you know what, tracking and counting your macros has nothing to do with that, right? If you wanna actually be free or you wanna have a good relationship with food, you need to look at food as like a fuel, as nutrition and not like this calorie game we try to play. Mine is Christina Rice. I thought about her too, cause it was just funny. It was funny, It was a yeah. good conversation. Just talked, honestly, I didn't learn much from it. It was a lot of nonsense and things where I was like, you're insane, that That's doesn't make mean. any sense. Stop. Um, Reiki healing. Shout out to Christina Rice. That was the big thing. I was like, we were talking about Reiki healing for a while and I was just like, it doesn't make sense. But it was so fun to talk about. It's a really good conversation. You guys should check that one out. It made me appreciate her as a person because like I could be pretty critical. I'm like, That's dumb. She laughed. Reiki healing is a complete scam and she could, you know, kind of handle it Roll and be like, a lot of people say that, but here's why it's not. That was a fun one. We'll link both of those episodes below. Favorite recipe we made. I feel like I did a lot of the recipes this year for some reason. Yeah. So I was, I could like remember the taste tests. And the one I was the most surprised by and like I still think about is the keto garlic bread. Do you remember that? I do remember it. <gasps> and I don't, haven't really had a second thought about it since oh, we made it. So good. I really want to make that again. It's just, it was so delicious. I think that's the best bread loaf we've made. So you can like leave out the cheese and the garlic and still have a good bread loaf if you guys want to try that out. Okay, then for mine, it's 
It's not one that is on the site yet. It is my homemade kefir. And so many of you guys comment on the way I say that. I'm pretty sure that's the way to say it. It kefir. is the way to say it, yeah. And they're telling me to say it improperly. Kefir is like the way you're supposed to say it. In America, I think a lot of the times kefir. we say kefir, yeah. Yeah, you say mega. Mega's not my name. And it is my name. It's just pronounced differently. <laughs> I've been making it for like probably four months now. I've refined the process. I've gotten better at it. I actually make it taste really extravagant and good now. And I'll share that one with you soon. We just haven't gotten around That'll to be recording on our site. yet. Yeah, it'll be on the membership site soon. Okay, we can blaze through the rest of these. That's all the food stuff. Okay. Favorite movie? Jumanji. Jumanji? Was that even this year? Yeah. That was last year. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, dang. But that can count, I No, guess. you pick yours and I'll think of mine. It really shows your poor taste in movies. Mine was easily, once upon a time in Hollywood, by far the best movie since the last good movie I've seen was The Favorite. Last year, my favorite movie. Part of it was the fact that it's just a great movie. Part of it is the fact that it wasn't set in the Marvel Universe which is rare these days. And it was just, you know, a well-made, awesome You're such movie. You're an old grump. I am a grump when it comes to these dumb Marvel <laughs> this movies. This is what you've turned into. A lot of people like them, though. I think not liking Marvel movies is a minority opinion. I just, I don't understand. Like, there's no rules. Anyone can fly anywhere and, like... Yeah, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter. Harry no, Potter people... There's rules. There's clear rules to those universes. In Marvel Universe... Captain Marvel, I think her name is. Why doesn't she just fly everywhere and destroy everything and like, you know, win Because the... there's rules. She can't just go rampant like that. Like everyone has their place in the universe. Yeah. You just don't understand I it. I don't like it. No. And we haven't seen the Joker. A lot of people say that one's good. I'll stick with your mind. I like Dwayne Johnson all the time, so. Yeah, she thought it was so funny when Kevin Hart's weakness was like, cake. was it cake? I, you laughed. You don't remember it, but it I was, I always I also over. fell asleep during the movie. You did. Oh, you also liked that really, really bad movie with Ryan Gosling. The First Man? Yeah. First Man was amazing. The space travel. You felt like you were really traveling through space. It was not good. Favorite song? For me, probably uh, Six Lack Black. Pretty Little Fears with J. Cole, because J. Cole's verse is mwah. What does he say in it? You're honorable. Yeah. You're honorable. That was good. It was a very good impression. And then my other favorite song, the real quickly, because me and Theo love to sing together and dance to it, is Adele. A lot of my favorite songs are based on what me and Theo listen to. Adele, Someone Like You. How's that one go? Someone Like You. Yeah, that's it. Okay, my favorite one, since I am a Young Thug fanboy, is Just How It Is, Young Thug. And it's a great song to listen to with your kids, aside from all the swearing, misogyny, you know, stick talk. That opening. That's not even that good. It's really good. Two bars is ooh ooh, diamonds peekaboo, and then you can play peekaboo with Theo. Well, that that makes it good. Yeah. And then uh, the and song. And then what's the second line? You can't say it on. <laughs> and then we watched a little peep documentary recently, oh. and it really made me realize he was like a good artist, and it yeah. went too soon. All artists are good artists because. No. They're making art. Like, no, I, I have a lot of respect for that. I don't have that ability within me. You do. Yeah. You rapped, you're really creative, you come up with the videos, you come up with the design for the I mean, movie. example of not a good artist, Lil Jon. Like, he's doing art, but it's pretty objectively poor art, I would say. It's not objective, though. It's subjective, and that's your opinion. A lot of people like Lil Jon out there. Shout out to my Lil Jon lovers. We gotta get Theo. He's waking up, and then we'll finish. Oh, look at him stretching. <sighs> and Daddy picks up. Oh, there he goes. The monster has awakened. Well, this is our number one answer. Oh, do you have any resolutions? In the beginning of December, I started running hmm. because and I, she was waiting to tell you guys about this because she wasn't sure. I was gonna actually stick it. to it, and like I've been, I've been pretty consistent, like three times a week. I want to say a minimum. Um, I More. run. Yeah. I would say four. Okay, thank you. Um, so I've been doing it at night, which is really nice. Matt's gone with me sometimes after Theo goes to bed. Because, like, how boring is it to just run laps if you, like, did track? It's boring, but it's a mental game with yourself. It's such a mental game. And, like, I'm realizing that, and I'm finally finding some appreciation of running outside. I feel like I tried on a treadmill one night, and it was just torture. And I signed us up for a 5K. All three of us. Woo! You so did? February 20th. Oh, that's a surprise? I didn't even know that. Yeah, I just signed up us up. February 22nd. I think it'll be fun. He'll be six months, so maybe in his stroller we'll just be like running with him. 
And 5K is a lot. I don't know if you know about Mega's athletic ability, but it was like a really big effort for her to run a mile for as long as I've known her. Yeah. I only think I've seen her run a mile once or twice. And that's in the recent, like, since we've been running. I have a few. I got the 52 book challenge I'm doing this year. I'll link the book list in the comments. Basically just read 52 books throughout the year. It's gonna be really hard. It's gonna be like two to three hours of reading per day. Another big one that I just got into like two days ago, chess. See, this is what This I... is not a resolution though. Yeah, because this is what I could have done with running. And yeah. then all of a sudden I'm not. Chess, the more time you put in, you get better. You're just slowly progressing. You can face this guy. You come back a month later, you face him again, the results could be totally different just based on your improvement. I guess that's with a lot of things, but with chess, it's just like so easy to visualize and, and see your improvement. I wanna focus on my relationships more. I feel like that's really hard when you have a child. So we made a friend couple. Mm -hmm. Ali and Chantel, shout out. He always asks us to shout him out. Yeah. And I really want to make sure like that, you know, we stay like committed to hanging out with them because they have a baby too, two months younger. She's so cute. And then I want to do like a joint trip with my best friend. And then I think just being parents, that's a big resolution, right? Good that's parents. That's more of like a requirement. It's not really a resolution. No, it's just not a requirement a to be parent. very present yeah. and active. And then the last thing is the future. The big thing is the membership site. We don't have the exact details ironed out yet, but essentially we're going to be doing maybe a little bit less things on YouTube, more things on the membership site. Um, just because, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to base so much of your business on YouTube that can just change the rules at any time. Yeah. So that's the main reason. And another big reason is YouTube is just like you upload a video, there's the video. On the site, which I'll link below if you guys are interested, it's like an entire ecosystem, mm -hmm. environment that we have control over. <clears throat> we have a meal planning tool that you can use and it integrates with the videos. And it's just like you can do so much more and just be more helpful. Yeah, we have a lot of different collaborators. Oh yeah, we have about 10 courses on the site at launch. And we'll keep, from, we're gonna keep adding some. Yeah, and there'll, yeah, it'll just be weekly content, you know, like a content calendar. We post new stuff, we get feedback from the community. There's a community forum section just for accountability, that's yeah. big. That's it for the video, guys. If you guys want to answer your responses to all the questions we answered below, that'd be cool. Yeah. Your resolutions, favorite movie, favorite snacks, all that type of stuff. Definitely the snacks. I wanna see what you guys are eating. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, woo. woo. Baby's first New baby. Year. We gotta start our Cave Baby Cooking channel soon. Yeah, that's another thing, guys. I was planning this whole new channel, Cave Baby Cooking. And, and what? YouTube. <laughs> You can't make videos like aim towards kids, so it's, Maybe it, it makes just no be on sense. Membership site. Yeah, it might just have to be there. We'll have a baby section. Yeah, basically like baby food recipes. Gum, 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 gum.